Hey everyone, I'm Cody with Up to Code. Today I'm going to show you how to properly install a deck ledger. So in my opinion, this is probably one of the best ways to install a deck ledger. I'm sure there's maybe better ways, but this is how I think it should be done on all conventional homes, ICF homes, it doesn't matter. And the whole premise behind this is just allowing water to exit. We have our bottom drip cap. We've just installed that. Luckily the house already had this existing drip cap for the siding. You need a drip cap at every horizontal break. The most important part is having this drip at the bottom of your deck ledger because you just got to think about how water runs. You'll want everything watershed. So we've installed the drip cap and we were lucky. We had a second layer of uh, paper in behind. So we left that paper in behind to protect the, the rim joist of the house. We put our drip cap on. I'll tell you how to set the height here in a sec. Then we did some, some peel and stick, some Nova flash over top. And then we've lapped that again. Because what happens, especially if you're in a climate with snow, and if you don't shovel your deck every two seconds, the snow builds up and it, it's a freeze-thaw cycle. So it'll thaw, the water will melt, or the snow will melt, and if you don't shovel it away, it'll just wick in through your deck board, and if you have no building protection here, it'll just rot out the rim joist to your house. I think deck ledgers are vastly overlooked in all construction, so that's why we're making the video. On the back side of the ledger, we've done relief cuts every eight inch on center, three sixteenths of an inch deep. We've also laid out our screw locations so that we know that our screws going through the face don't go through that relief cut because then that'll just allow water to get into your building. So you, you want to keep that in mind. With those relief cuts, then if water does and will, get in behind, it has somewhere to exit. You're not trapping water in be between your paper layer and your ledger. Drip cap allows that water to run back out and it doesn't try to wick or capillary action back into the house. So those relief cuts also just cut that um, hydrostatic pressure where it would try to force it into the house, right? In this scenario, my customer's using a full inch and a half thick two by six. So I want an inch and a half from the face of this drip to the top of my ledger. So you just, I just did some math beforehand, but I just want to show you that we have that inch and a half. But how I did it before all this was in place is I said, okay, I'm using two by 10 ledger. That's nine and a quarter. My deck boards are inch and a half. That takes me to 10 and three quarter, and I'm gonna add an extra eighths for wiggle room. So that's 10 and three quarter, or 10 and seven eighths. So 10 and seven eighths from here to the bottom. So you just gotta go like this, and then hook your tape on your square, and then make a mark. Now I never marked the underside of my drip cap because it's too hard to look underneath. So what I do is I just hold 10 and 7 eighths at the bottom corner and I measure where the top is and it's 7 and 7 eighths to there. So I'm going 7 and 7 eighths from here down to a line and I'll chalk that through and that's where the top of this drip cap goes. Then it's easy to install. When you're chalk lining over top of building paper, make sure the paper is attached very well. Otherwise the wind or any movement can shift your line and then your dimensions all screwed up. Once you have your dimension, chalk your line, install your drip cap, install your peel and stick, overlap everything so it has proper shingle effect and boom, you're done. Then you have a properly installed deck ledger, you have proper drainage and your house will last forever.